man, a check engine light on. That could be a hundred things. You know, we could put a piece of black electrical tape over it. Nah, we're not gonna do that. Today, we're gonna fix it and diagnose it, and we're gonna take you along for the ride on Tech Garage. Hey gang, come on in and welcome to season six of Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. This is gonna be a great season. Of course, we're gonna stick to the hows and whys of automotive repair. And we're also gonna take you through an LS build, all 13 shows, not a thousand horsepower. Stay tuned, it's gonna be done right. Then Brian, garage ed, holy mackerel. Engine performance and drivability. That's what we're all about. Starts right here. Absolutely, you almost want to call the show Ultra High Tech Garage this year. We're going so deeply behind the engine management systems and sensors in a way we never have before. It's going to be way exciting and the whole journey. The LS build is going to be power on a budget. I love that. But you know, interestingly, today's repair started with a code. Imagine yeah. that. You know, I'm not going to bring one without a code. You know that. <laughs> We're talking about a P0171, man. That's a lean code, Brian. I like oxygen sensors, map sensors, O2 sensors. I can check the sensor and the wire harness. I got somewhere to go. This one, mm, not so much. Yeah, and the stakes are high when you've got a lean code. You can do a lot of damage, and that ECU and all the other sensors are working so hard to compensate, you got to solve this one. So logically, I'm thinking we start with fuel pressure. A good one, because think about too much air, not enough fuel. we got got uh, vacuum leaks. Think about clogged fuel injectors. And on this car, really important, the fuel filter is located in the tank. And when it's in the tank, we really can't check it. This is the right way to go. Brian, put your expertise and your magic on this joker. I'll set up a demo. Thank you very much. Folks, seriously, the, the, today's ECUs and all the other sensors and engine management work hard to keep this thing running smoothly, even though we had a code. There were no drivability symptoms here. So, to get a fuel pressure check, you gotta have the right tool for the job. You want safety goggles, and you gotta relieve first the pressure in the fuel system. We've done that with the Schrader valve outside, so we don't have wet gas in here and fumes and all those things to deal with. So, it's very simple. On the Mazda 3, there's a clamp right here. Roll it up around. Don't break it, just take your time here. It actually helps if the engine's a little bit warm because it makes this a little more elastic. You get this clip off, and now get a rag down underneath. We've relieved it, but I just don't, don't want any fuel dripping down anywhere near anything else on the engine. We're gonna take this connector off, and here is the feed coming from the fuel pump. You can see it right here. So we're gonna come to the inbound side of our fuel pressure gauge, get this connected, then we're gonna connect up the outbound side to that same connector, get a reading here, we'll start the vehicle, we'll validate or find a problem there. But John, can you tell us please, what does lean really mean? Now how does it work and how does the car actually know it's lean? Well, I got a fuel injected engine right here, man. I love this thing, we fire it up. Man, it's actually command corrects conditions, CCC. Keep that in mind. It's all about the computer here, my friend. This is actually the command. What's going on? Well, you look at the graphic there, you can see it's actually going rich, lean, rich, lean, and he's making that decision. How does he make the decision? Well, it's the oxygen sensors, one of the biggest players. Now, he's located right down there in the oxygen stream. Look at this here. You can actually see a good one's fluctuating from rich to lean. Up in the right-hand corner, well, that's too rich. It's way up there too long. The condition down there, there's too much fuel. Now our car over here, I'm suspecting it looks like the bottom left down there. It's way down there on the lean. It's not developing a lot of millivolts, so it's staying there lean. If it stays there too long, bam, P0171. That's what Brian has. Then we get to the injector. Here's the injector right here, and they're located right here on the throttle body. This is all fuel injected. So what happens? Well, if you look at the top right there, 5% is not a lot of fuel. So what it's doing, it's trying to take away fuel because there's a rich condition. Now, if it was 50% along the line, it's happy. It's running perfect. 50% on and off, we're good. We're trying for that 14.7, that stoichiometric number. That's what we're looking for. The bottom one, well, that's a real, real on time. That's probably what we have on our car because it's a lean condition. It's making up with the fuel. Now our car is running super lean, so we're probably getting that big fuel dumped in there and he may not even notice that. Now Brian's not fueling around over there. Let's check in with him. 
there it is. Okay, so I've checked and rechecked to make sure I've got the factory clamp back on. This is a tight and secure connection. You don't want any safety issues here when you're doing this. So the next step is to fire this thing up and see what kind of fuel pressure we got. Hey, John, can you fire this up for us? Hey, I got you covered. All right, we're gonna watch the pressure come up. Got a rag here just for any drippage, we're good. Running, comes up, it settles and we're right at a constant 55, and that's right within spec. So, this part of the diagnosis is done. We're getting plenty of fuel at the right pressure up here to the fuel rail. So, deeper diagnostics coming your way. Stay with us on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Shut her down. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented to you by rockauto.com. Well, you saw it, the fuel system pressure check was all good. So, buddy, it's time for level two of diagnostics. Yeah, remember, we got too much air in this car, not enough fuel. So it's time to check a vacuum leak. And what better way to do that with our Smoke Pro Total Tech, man? This joker puts out a ton of smoke. That's hugely important, especially when we're dealing with vacuum leaks. But think about it, exhaust leaks, intake leaks. You know, we're dealing with those pesky evaporative emission codes mm. and lines to the fuel tank, to the fuel cap, even inside the cab for wind noises. This thing puts out a ton of smoke. But what I really like, Brian, right here this bladder check this out I can pump this thing up and it swells up and fits any intake manifold that's big that's time perfect because we don't have to open up any other evap lines any other vacuum lines in the engine we can start literally furthest upstream at the source of air so that's a brilliant machine the other thing they do they've done this before because they figured out we need a searchlight to try to track down any smoke here that keeps the integrity of all those lines so you're not creating your own problem because yeah. once you disconnect those evap lines you can do it every time now i got it hooked up to a shop air source right here it's just as simple as pushing the button bam come over here open it up and guess what it blows almost that. as much, much smoke as you. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is heavy. Give so I some. come down here. Now the beautiful thing is I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to turn it on. Now when I turn it on, it's actually passing through the middle of this bladder, going into the intake manifold. So guess what? I didn't bust a line off at all. I know I'm in good shape. Now we're just a matter of finding the leak, Brian. A little something right here, buddy. Uh -oh. Here we go. Track this down, see if I can feel it. There's an elbow right here. There you go. I just felt it breathe. Let me get this elbow off and see. Ooh, there it is. It's pouring out something. of there. Yep. There you go. And there's the elbow of the culprit. You could call that a broken elbow on an evap line, or you could call it a lean code. I yeah. think that's our culprit. Exactly. And you think about that for a minute. And I see it's cracked right there. It's probably in the seam. Totally normal. But on the evap system, kept driving along. That may even cause an evap code. The check engine light, it caught it with lean. But once again, that's way too much air. That oxygen sensor's down there going, hey, man, hey, we're lean. We're super lean. You know what the computer does? Bam, compensates, injectors go rich. So the driver doesn't even know it. He's driving down the road, everything's great, but gas mileage? Not good. I'll bet that was a symptom he didn't realize is the fuel economy was down because that ECU was desperate all along the way to keep it at 14.7 to one. So that's an impressive catch. The other thing that's really important here, it's not a big, fancy, high-performing moving part we're replacing, but you think about avoidance. All the injectors that we didn't hurt, anything in the ignition system that we didn't hurt because we caught that problem. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, it's connected to the EVAP lines. We have all these EVAP connectors, the fuel lines coming in, the intake. What about the intake manifold oh, gasket? You got two pieces here, here, yep. bolted to, underneath, everything. I can go into the exhaust system. I mean, this is changing that mixture, that upset in that whole mixture, everything we're talking about this season. Yep, absolutely. So I'm gonna head back to the rockauto.com shelf, see if we got a new EVAP line and we're gonna get this joker fixed. Well, you take a short break, but not a long one because we're wheeling out the LS engine, man. We got our project LS lesson coming up right after the break. There's more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com.
Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, Brian, a segment we've been looking forward to, man. We've been wanting to do this for years, an LS build, but you know, it's named LS Lesson for a reason. Absolutely. You know what? This is an awesome motor. You can do so much with it. It fits in so many things, but we're going to be methodical. And for a change, we don't have to drive a vehicle out of Tech Garage tonight. We can take our time, work on a little bit on this every single show this year. We're going to make a bunch of power, and we're going to do it on a budget. Yeah, absolutely on a budget. And the key word is, though, it's going to be right and when it's done man it's going to run so yep. first thing we're going to remove all the spark plugs but you know you don't want to just throw the spark plugs out you want to take them out in a methodical manner like brian said number them look at them that's the key take a look at this first graphic there you actually see spark plugs is going to tell you a lot about what's going on inside of an engine you can see a normal one there carbon fouled and then a lot of the other ones are either overheating or pre-ignition is basically overheating all the electrodes are burnt well check this out we even talked about this on today's show we talked about that lean condition. Well, if it got too lean, you can see a spark plug right here. This is actually original one, and there's one. Look at that electrode on that joker. I mean, it's totally toasted off. That was a dead miss. Now, if that was happening in this engine, Brian, we got to really suspect that cylinder to come out of. Absolutely, and I love that. I love that pre-investigation because what that tells us is as we disassemble later on, we'll start to be looking very deliberately for evidence that we found right here, right now. So I'm all set up for our first compression check. We need to do that all the way around in all eight cylinders, but let's see what we've got here in one, just for fun. Super logical. I mean, a compression test, you can do it out in the junkyard. Doesn't matter. Tell us the condition of your engine. We actually are hooked up to a jump pack to a starter. Now, to do that, you would want the engine warm. Another thing you want to do is you want to block the throttle wide open so you get full airflow, and really, you want all the spark plugs out so you have an even cranking. And then what you want to do is simply just watch the gauge through four puffs, four compression cycles. Brian, yep. tell me when that thing puffs four Four times and we'll right. see what we have. You ready? Yep. All Go clear? Through. Clear. Three, four. Good. But you're just on under 150, buddy. We're 150. pretty solid right yeah, there. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. solid. So the key would be to go to the next one and move on. So why don't you yep. do one more? Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and look at this graphic here. It talks about compression. Well, if they were all close to each other and high, you're in good shape. But let's say, for example, they're all low. Well, that could be a timing issue or some valve problems across where it affects all the cylinders. If one or more was low, well, we're kind of isolating the cylinder there. Maybe a valve, maybe something going on in that cylinder rings. Or if it was low, you can always do a wet compression test. You can put some oil in there, run it again, see if it comes up. If it comes up, well, then you got a ring problem. So we'll do one more. Ready? Yep, go for it. One, two, three, four. Right there, still the same, 148, 149, 150. Awesome, and it's good to note, you know, we got this motor out of a junkyard and we were told it was rebuilt, but yeah. hey, we don't trust that. <laughs> now another key, you can see the graphic right there. You actually get this uh, engine evaluation, Brian. You wanna go through and you wanna put everything on there. You wanna put what we found with the compression readings, the spark plugs, everything, because that's gonna lead us in the direction when we tear it down to what we're looking for. I mean, we don't wanna toss the head to the side and start tearing it down. You know, boom, let's makes look. All the difference in the world to document this as you go. Another fun little tip, use your phone. Do a little video recording of yourself. This is a fun project. Also capture some of that data. You've got it to refer to later. A really good tip. Take pictures along the way. This is going to be an awesome project. What you it got? Is. Well, cylinder leakage gauge. Let's just say, for example, that cylinder was low. Well, we can even go as far to pinpoint why it's low. That's the cool part. So you see the cylinder leakage gauge here? What we're gonna do is take it to top dead center. We would inject air into the cylinder, right? Yep. So at top dead center, both valves are closed. The air should go nowhere. If it's leaking out of the throttle body, hey, it's an intake. If you get out of the exhaust, it's an exhaust. Bubbles in the radiator, you got adjacent cylinders, you got blown head gasket. One way or the other, we're gonna determine the problem, isolate the problem before the teardown, yep. and whammo, man. We're gonna to do an awesome inspection. Absolutely, and I love the fact we got this jump pack and I'm not out here with my breaker bar turning that crank pulley. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be an awesome rebuild. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Ridline Detection, the world's best-selling diagnostic leak detector. Top coat. Don't just coat it, top coat it. Steel rubber products. Quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need.
Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now at here at Tech Garage, we're all about the hows and whys. And how better to demonstrate that than through Garage Ed? Well, last season, it was all about the electricity and electrical on the vehicle. And this season, well, you blew up our social media. So you wanted engine performance and drivability, well, you got it. So what is engine performance? Well, here's the definition. It's kind of the evaluation of the powertrain's operation qualities, which include idle smoothness, hot starting, throttle response, power delivery, and even tolerance for altitude changes. Well, you know at Tech Garage, that's a lot of fluff. So let's just get right to it. How do they work and how are we gonna fix them? So there's some inputs that happen. All this stuff has to happen together, but the inputs are the eyes, the nose, the senses. What well, sensors, what's going on with the car? This season, we're gonna take you through all of them, man. We're gonna start up here. We're gonna look at things like the map sensor, looking at the vacuum at the engine. We're gonna talk about the intake air temperature sensor. It has to know what the temperature outside Site is for once again that fuel mixture engine coolant temperature sensor what's going on inside the engine as far as temperature once again everything goes back to that perfect fuel delivery oxygen sensors down in the exhaust stream measuring the oxygen content in the exhaust for rich fuel mixtures knock sensors I have to know what's going inside the blocker retard the timing all the way over to a couple sensors over here we have a throttle position sensor where's the throttle at and a mass airflow sensor, how much air is coming in, density, and all kinds of measurements going on there. We're even going to talk about some ignition sensors over there, the cam and the crank position sensors. Then we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about outputs, your hands, something physically moving to change the dynamics of the vehicle. Well, what are those? Well, you have an idle air control motor up here, letting the air in to raise the idle or lower it. You got fuel injectors, our heart of our system, delivering the fuel. And over there you have the EGR valve. That's actually going to let some exhaust gases in. That's an output. Also, we're really going to take a look at a lot of the data. We have a scan tool hooked up with everything that's going on. So when it's talking back to the computer, you at home, you'll understand why and what's happening, and it'll sure make it a lot easier to diagnose. Now, we're also talking about an Obed 2 connector down here, and it's a 16-pin connector. You can look at this graphic right here. It starts at the left for pin 1, goes all the way to 16. But the two important pins we're dealing with are 4 and 16. That's power and ground. And this season, we got our exclusive DIY guy on the job. So you can see how it works on the vehicle. Brian's checking out the DLC connector. Let's check in with him. Well, if you're watching the show and you have your Apple Watch on or maybe your phone, to some degree, you're monitoring your body's health right now, just like today's vehicles want to do for you. But it all starts right here at the OBD2 port. Now, we talked about the different types of pins. John mentioned that right here, we've got this loosened up so you can see it better. Yours is probably fixed to the bottom of the dash. Port number four is always the chassis ground. Really important to understand, I'll come back to that. Port number 16, no matter who made the vehicle, who, who the manufacturer is, is always battery voltage. So if you want a quick, easy way to check battery voltage without popping the hood, port number 16 is your key. Now, why does that matter? If you're gonna use a scan code reader, that port has to be able to communicate to you with voltage. So in the world of engineering, it's health and condition monitoring, it's exactly the same thing here. You're going to connect to the ground, number four here. Make sure these pins don't touch, you'll blow a fuse. Connect to power and you're gonna see 12 volts. Again, now any scan code reader, fancy diagnostic tool will work at this port. All vehicles, folks, since 1996 have an OBD2 port. Your vehicle wants to communicate with you. This is powerful stuff. And in this Garage Ed segment this year, you're going to be amazed what you can do just understanding how all these sensors work together to optimize power and fuel economy. Well, as a matter of fact, John and Tom have some more tech tips around this whole complex system. Boy, there is a lot going on with engine performance, but Tom, I hear this quite a bit. Check engine lights on. Needs a computer. Sensor's bad. Needs a computer. It's not running right. Needs a computer. Not the case, is it? No, you, you don't want to treat a symptom or, or shoot the messenger to start replacing parts willy-nilly. Uh, a good resource we have at rockauto.com is our info pages for the parts. If you click on the part it, and you, uh, you, there, there'll be an info button you push on and it'll bring up information from the manufacturer, um, tips uh, like an engine control module, make sure, okay, before I replace that, is there a solenoid maybe that's shorting out that's damaging the engine control module? Fix that solenoid before you replace the engine control module. Um, another resource we have is our newsletter we, we put out twice a month that new parts are always um, coming down the line and for example this newsletter we talk about battery current sensors so that's something that didn't exist 10 years ago or, or, or older 
um, with, with all the new electrical power steering, electrical this and that, new parts like this are being added to tightly control the flow of electrical current and, and maximize fuel economy by just powering up the alternator as much as it needs to be. Definitely, I'm grateful for both of those. You know, Tom, great information today, just like the show was. I'm gonna check back in with Brian. Well, there you go. We have had a blast today exposing some of the technology and the criticality of balance in today's vehicles, vacuum balance, fuel balance, all of it. Not to mention, we got to play on an LS engine. Exactly, you know, all that's left now is to clear the coach, take it on a test drive, but you know, I'm confident we fixed this one. Kind of cool to start the season out with one that we fixed and we fixed it right. It's gonna run like a champ. <laughs> Absolutely, well, we're out of time for today, folks. So check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that cool social media, we love it, keep it coming. We'll see you next week for more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola College is a member institution of the Florida College System with a current enrollment of over 2,000 students. Chipola offers bachelor's and associate degree programs as well as college credit and workforce development certificates. Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.